In Swift, we have conditional structures consisting of if and the variations of if, such as if, else, if, else, and switch structures. These are really not much different from what you'd find in other languages, such as C-sharp or Java. For the if structure, here I've got an if, else. Um, I'm using the modulus operator to take a value, divide it by 2, and see if it's equal to 0. And if it is, I'm going to print the number as even. And if it's not, I'll print the number is odd. So if I were to change this value, say, from 15 to 12, you'll see now it's going to print the number is even. Well, let me paste in another example. Here I have two values, a and b. a equals 10, b equals 5. And I've got an if structure I'm looking at whether a or the modulus of a is 0 and the modulus of b is 0. If it is, I'm going to print out that both numbers are even. Then I've got an else if fork, and I'm looking to see if a mod 2 does not equal 0 and b modulus 2 equals 0. Then I'll say a is odd and b is even. And then I do just the opposite. The modulus operation for a equaling 0, or for b not equaling 0, a is even, b is odd. And my else, which is based on my default, would be if they're both going to be not equal to 0, then both numbers are odd. So you can see here with a equals 10, b equals 5, I get a is even, b is odd. If I were to change this, say, to an 8, now I'm going to get both numbers are even. I can make the first one not be even. Value A is odd, while value v is, B is even. And we'll make them both odd. And you'll see that it runs that else fork, and both numbers are odd. One important thing to note here is the necessity of white space in our Boolean uh, operations. If I take this space out on line 18 in front of the 0, I get an error. And it treats it as, as if this was a closure. So put the space back in, and the error goes away. Let me paste in an example of a switch. So here in the switch, I have var zyx equals 9. I'm doing a switch on that value. And one thing you'll notice as compared like to C sharp uh, or even Java, these values that in either the if or in the switch are not in parentheses. Okay. Uh, we have a series of cases here. I'm looking at an integer value. So I have case 1, case 2, case 3, case 4. Notice there's no breaks in the cases. You do not need to break these as you do in C Sharp or Java. And we can do multiple matches in a case. So here I have case 5, comma 6, comma 7 in which case it's going to print out these three lines. So the breaks are built into the cases, so it goes down to the next case and it considers that to be a break. And then we must have a default value. Every possibility must be covered, so it requires there be a default value. In this case, I'm going to print out no animals selected. So with the case of 9, notice here on, on this case, I have a range, 8 dot 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 10. So anything between 8 and 10, it's going to execute this print line. And that's what I see happening here with my zyx equals 9. If I change this, say, to a 6, now I'm going to get this case match, and it's going to print out elephant, fox, and giraffe. Let's do a 3. Now it prints out cougar. And if I did something like, a uh, say, a 23, now I'm hitting the default of no animals selected. Okay, let's paste in one more example of a switch structure. So in this switch, I'm going to use a tuple. And I've got a tuple as a variable, has two integer values, 2, comma 3. And I'm going to do a switch structure on the value of that tuple. In the case, we simply look at the two different values here. So if the first element is 1 and the second is 1, I'm going to print Monday. In this case here, I'm looking for the first element being 2, and then the second element being anything, and that's the underscore. The underscore is like a wild card, matches any value, in which case I would print Tuesday. And that's what we see happening here at the 2, comma 3. We can also use ranges in our cases. So if 
The first number is between 1 and 3, and the second is between 7 and 10. I'm going to print Wednesday. Note that you can have the line to be executed on the same line as the case statement, if you prefer. If you're going to have multiple lines, then you probably want to break it up like we did up here with fox, elephant, and giraffe. And then our second case, our next case here is the first number between 1 and 5, the second number between 4 and 8. I'll print Thursday. Next case, any value for the first number, 5 through 10 for the second. I'm going to print Friday. And the default, if there is no match, I'm going to print weekend. So a 2, 3, we see we get a Tuesday. If I change this to a 1, comma 1, you'll notice that it provides Monday as the answer, or what's to be printed out. Let's match the next case. So if I do a 1, comma 8, now I'm getting Wednesday. It's matching between the range of 1 and 3 and between the range of 7 and 10. Now notice it would actually match this next case, but only executes, once it finds one case that's true, it's going to end there. It's going to truncate and not do the other cases. But if I set this value, say, to 5, comma 8, now I'm going to get a Thursday. It would also match the Friday. So let's make this a uh, 7. Now I'm going to get Friday. And if I make this last number here, the second number, 12, now it's going to give me weekend. And of course, in a switch structure, we can't have cases that are equaling strings. Uh, we're not limited to using integers.